really the final inspiration for the book came out of hearing so many amazing thought leaders talk about what needed to change in the world in terms of our behavior, in terms of our choices and decisions, whether that's with the environment or the economy or government or whatever it was. So many things that people are telling us we have to do differently. And I realized that while all that is very true, uh, much of it I you know, feel like, yes, absolutely, these things need to change. And I realized that none of those things are going to happen until there shifts inside of us, in terms of our perspective, in terms of uh, how we are showing up. If we're going to thrive into the 21st century and truly create a world that works, these are the shifts that have to happen. And it's not about what are we going to do. Ultimately, yes, changes have to happen there. But first, it's who are we? How are we showing up here? If, if we look at, in ancient cultures, we see the images of a cross on, on cave dwelling you know, walls. You know, it pre, that image of a cross predates religions. And that cross symbol represents the being and the doing, in a sense. It, it represents the vertical, is the being, who we are in the world, um, how we are functioning on our, in the inner plane, if you will, in our inner awareness. And the horizontal then is the action, it's the doing, it's work out there in the three-dimensional world. And one of the things that I've discovered in my, uh, in my work is that the greater the alignment in that vertical, the greater we are aligned in who we are with a larger potential of what's wanting to happen, paying attention to uh, what's wanting to unfold for a greater good, and so forth, the more we have that alignment and so that our thoughts and intentions and beliefs and decisions and choices are all in alignment with that bigger picture of what wants to happen, the greater success we have then when we step into the horizontal, into action. When I go into to working with, with organizations, the first thing we talk about are four levels of engagement. Um, uh, it's a very simple model that I created to help us look at how do we interact with one another and how do we interact with what's happening around us. So on the surface level is, uh, is the drama. And the big question we're asking is whose fault is this? It's not my fault. And somehow, you know, we've got to find out who to blame. If we drop down a level from that, then we come to situation. At the situation level, it's just here are the facts. Here's what happened or here is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And how do we fix it? Mm -hmm. And how do we fix it as quickly as possible? It's these first two levels that we live on in the mass consciousness most of the time. When we come down to the third level, we come to choice. So it's drama, situation, choice. And at, at the third level, it's not what are my choices of how to fix it, mm. but rather, who do I choose to be here? That completely shifts the energy because now I've taken the power back. And now I'm no longer in the victim place. I may not be able to change the circumstances right away, but I can choose who I will be within that circumstance. I can choose what my relationship is going to be to it. I can look at what my role has been up to this point to create this circumstance and what do I choose as my role going forward. Mm -hmm. So suddenly now we've moved into an entirely different level of empowerment and, um, and really creative power. Once we've taken that step, we can drop on down to the fourth level, which is opportunity. And at the opportunity level, then we're saying, so what's wanting to happen here? What is that potential that's emerging? What's starting to show up here that really wants to happen? Any project that we take on as, as an organization, um, there's always some bigger thing that's trying to happen through it. The project itself is just a vehicle for a potential to come to life. It's not so hard to get a team to think about that and identify that potential it's hard to keep them focused there because they may identify that potential, but very quickly they find themselves back in, yeah, but here's the problem we have to solve, or here's the, here's the pressure that we're under right away. It's very helpful to have someone who will take on that responsibility of being the steward uh, or, or kind of uh, being the one who is um, uh, taking care of those levels of engagement. The person who can periodically say, press pause, where are we right now? on those four levels. Oops, we had gotten down to choice. We were functioning there for a while, but we just ran back up to drama, or we just flipped back into, into fix-it mode. Mm -hmm. And so someone whose main job is to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. 
And when you can work in a team in that way and have an open communication and a flow and a, a, a trust and respect so that when that person who's the sort of gatekeeper or whatever is saying, hold on, look at where we are again. Mm -hmm. What happens if we shift back into choice? What happens if we drop on down to opportunity again and pay attention to that? So it, it's a discipline. We're so focused now in our culture on the little details and we lose that big picture. We lose the sense of, of the long-term plan. We lose the sense of what I call cathedral building. That, uh, you know, that it, the cathedrals, those beautiful cathedrals in Europe took a hundred years to build. Uh, we just want something built in six months and it's done, you know. So having that big picture view, recognizing that we may be working towards something that may not happen in our lifetimes, and that's okay. Those artisans and craftsmen who built those cathedrals, this was their craft. It was their, it was their whole life what they were doing, carving that gargoyle or figuring out how to create that arch. They didn't have the technology then that we have now to be able to use a machine and make it happen. They figured out how to build arches with one stone on top of another. I look at it and think, how did that just not all fall down? But they, they knew how to do that. It was their craft. How do we, in organizations and businesses, come back to approaching life as a craft, as an, as an, and as an art? By approaching our work as an art. Leadership is an art. Coaching is an art. You know, we just bought this house in the first week uh, for the grass, the grass to be cut, I just hired the people as they were showed up to cut the place next door, you know? And they did it and it was fine. And then I hired these other people to cut it the second time who were less expensive and took longer to do it. And what a difference, like the attention to detail, the attention and their intention and in what they were doing. You know, when I do soul mission work with an organization, so we get the sole mission for the organization and then we start with the leadership team and say, so how to, how, let's, let's find the sole missions for each of the individuals and how do they tie in? Mm -hmm. And what's, oh, I see now how I can come to work to live my sole mission. Now I'm here for a very different reason. And now I have a connection here. I'm really getting to live who I am and why I'm here through my work in this organization. Mm -hmm. And how, how amazing would it be if that's how we all showed up to work every day. I mean, I, people always ask me, what are my hobbies? What am I, I think that's just what I do all the time. My work is my hobby. It's, not, it's kind of not a separation because it's just all my passion. I just love what I do. Mm -hmm.